All right, so before we jump into QuickBooks Advanced Reporting, let's talk about some of the core features in QuickBooks when it comes to reporting. So first of all, QuickBooks has 110 uh, built-in reports. By built-in reports, I'm specifically talking about these reports that are here, right? When we click on the Reports menu, and we go into each of these categories, this is what I meant by built-in reports, okay? And um, out of those uh, built-in reports, we can actually customize them through filters and columns. And I'll do an example of that to show you what I mean. Now, when when we're going to build a, a custom report from scratch, not necessarily pull a standard report and, and customize it, we're going to be working with three main custom reports. One is going to be the custom summary. The other one is the custom transaction detail. And the third one is a list report. And I'll show you an example of each one. And, and what I like about the QuickBooks built-in reporting uh, scheme is that the interface, it's, it's common across multiple screens. For example, if I do an advanced find, I, I will use the same filtering system as I do with uh, custom reporting. So let me kind of show you what I mean by all that. So number one, we can start with a custom report by going into reports, company financial, clicking on profit and loss, and this is a custom report, but this is where we can start going deeper and deeper by doing things like going into customize report and then going into filters. Now, filter is where I tell it what information to show me and what information not to show me. So for example, I can go down to one of the classes and say, only show me a profit and loss for this particular class. And that's how filters work. It, it, would, it would discriminate every other piece of data and rebuild the report only with, with the transactions that have that condition. Now, in, in this particular report, this is a summary report. The concept of columns has to do with um, how the data is summarized into different columns. So in this case, the rows are accounts uh, because this is a profit and loss and the rows by default are accounts. Um, and then the columns are, let's say, for example, customer job, and then we can create a report with multiple dimensions. Now, in the QuickBooks Advanced Reporting world, which we'll talk about uh, a little bit later on, this concept of rows and columns, um, the, the expression that they use for that is called dimensions. So, so whenever you see the term dimensions in a QuickBooks Advanced Report, which we'll talk about in a few minutes, um, this is exactly what they're talking about. They're talking about rows and columns, mostly rows, but they can also be used as columns. Now, I was referring to um, the advanced find. This is a edit menu and uh, find, and then we click on advanced. And what I was referring to is this particular set of filters. Um, this is the filters that we use to find specific transactions. It's actually the same exact set of filters um, that we use whenever we go to customize report filters and we filter uh, data within a specific report. So this is something that's extremely awesome about how QuickBooks desktop reports work is that the filtering system is common across multiple interfaces. Now, when we talk about building reports from scratch, we go to the reports menu, we go to custom reports, and we're going to do either a summary or a detail. So I'll, I'll start with a summary. And the concept that I kind of want to nail down in, in, the, in the world of a summary report is the concept of columns and rows. So in the summary re report, a row and a column, they serve as you know the y and the x axis for a table. So for example, if the columns I were to use a customer, and then on the rows I were to use, let's say, um, account list, and then I hit OK, Basically, I'm going to see accounts on the on the left side here. This is my rows, and then I'm going to see uh, customers on the columns. So this concept of rows and columns in the summary report, they're basically uh, designed for you to create a y and an x axis in a, in, a, in a square table, um, which is a little bit different than the concept of columns in a detailed report. So I'm going to go to reports. And then I'm going to go to custom reports and click on transaction detail. Now, transaction detail report is not about um, a square table with Y and X axis. This is more about uh, data points and lines. So in a detail report, it's more about line by line. And then the concept of columns, which are the columns that are up here. I'm going to click on customize report. 
columns in a detailed report is talking about the fields, it's talking about the specific data points that you want to see. Um, now, that's different than filters. Now, I can have, for example, I can have, let me go down here, and I'm going to turn on one of these uh, columns here. I'm going to turn in, uh, let's say, state. So I'm going to turn on this column, hit OK, and then there is a state column there. So that basically, it means that it's going to show me that data point. But then when I go to filters, that means that I, in the, in the case of this specific one, I'm going to search for state here. Let's say I only want to see sales for California. So basically what this is going to do is going to narrow down the amount of information that's there. Now, let, let me use a different state. I'll use Michigan here and then I'll hit OK. And then this will show me only Michigan sales. So this is really um, as deep as we can go with uh, QuickBooks custom reports. And we can go one layer of subgrouping which is here the total in buy. So if I were to total these, in this case, by, let's say by customer, um, I can actually uh, group the, the, my customer. I can group these. This happened all to be the same customers. Let me hit all here. So if I group them by customer, then I'm gonna I'm gonna see subtotals on these reports uh, based on the specific uh, customer. Now, the limitation is I can only have one layer of uh, grouping here of total buy and this is where we get into custom reports uh, we're going to be able to see a lot more uh, depth when it comes to being able to have a lot more pivoting points in there so let me go back into the presentation here and we'll cover the next topics so the built-in reports that we were talking about are things like the profit loss balance sheet inventory evaluation as i uh, as i mentioned before we start with a pre-built report and then we can customize it in QuickBooks. The summary re report, which is the same example, the first example that I did, we talked about rows and columns being a table or a grid. And then we talked about, or we didn't talk about, but uh, w whenever I double click on any piece of information in a summary report, it'll take me to a detailed report, which is actually kind of cool and great about QuickBooks. Now, what are some of the limitations is I can only see information from the transactions table. So a, a summary report and a detailed report only gets data from a transaction table. I'll do an example of that in a second. The other piece is that we can't really mix accounts payable and accounts receivable data in summary reports. It's kind of an inherent problem that QuickBooks has when building uh, custom summary reports. And the other thing is we can't really do custom calculations or custom subtotals. So let me talk about those limitations real quick. So let me switch over to QuickBooks and I'm gonna escape here and then I'm gonna go to reports and then I'm gonna to go to sales and then I'll do a sales by customer summary report. So this is a basic summary report where in this case, my columns, I can make them uh, weak, right? So these are my columns, the weeks, and then the rows are the customers, right? Now, there's a piece of information that I don't have here that I can't see, uh, such as my customer's address, right? My customer's address, if I go to customize report, I really don't have anywhere to add my customer's address. Now I can filter it. Yes, I can. So if I wanted to only show uh, customers in Michigan, same example as I did before, this will narrow down and only show me Michigan customers. However, I can't group them or show that piece of information. Yes, I can filter it, but it's kind of the filter happens behind the scenes and I really don't know what's being filtered. Um, so this concept of grouping, it's very important when it comes to advanced reports. So a list report, which is going to be here into in the list menu, and I can do a customer contact list. A list report will have information like an address, phone number, uh, state, zip code. Actually, if I click on customize report, the columns are, are similar to how a transaction detail report is, where I can uh, you know search something in here, a state, hit OK, and then I'll, I should have a column here for state, right? So this information is only in a list report. It's not in the transactions report. So whenever I, uh, let me just make this a little bit smaller, hit cancel here, drag this here. So whenever I'm trying to sort of filter uh, customers by the state that they're in, I really can't. So if I really wanted to pull that off, I would have to export this report into Excel, export that report into Excel, creates a funky VLOOKUP formula, 
to get that information to then be inserted there and then maybe I can start uh, doing that from there and, and that's kind of a, that's kind of a challenge I think but Let's do an example of a pivot table just so we can get an idea for how pivots work. And we're going to actually do that in Excel. So I'm going to double click on this uh, total here, $104,000. So double click on that. This is going to give me a, a detailed report. And basically what I'm looking for is I want uh, this type of report in an Excel spreadsheet. Um, that way I can, I can take information like the state because in a detailed report, I can pull the state. So let me pull the state here. So this information, I can pull uh, the state. There it is. And then in Excel, I could essentially uh, do a pivot table and get this piece of information. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and click on uh, Excel and create new worksheet. And now for, for, the, for the example of this exercise, I'm going to have to do some Excel cleaning. I probably should have built this report just a little bit of a different way to make so I don't have to do so much cleaning but for the time being this should be uh, fairly fast so I actually don't mind cleaning up this data real quick so I'm just going to go ahead and all these excess data points that I don't need so basically this was a detailed report that contained a whole bunch of open invoices right and as we mentioned before the the data like the customers uh, name state or the state was not available in a regular summary report. It was on a detailed report, but I was looking for a way a way to um, group them or summarize them. So now that I have uh, clean information in Excel like this, and I'll just, just keep cleaning those excess blank fields that I don't need to avoid any confusion. Obviously, I should have uh, cleaned this up in sort of in QuickBooks before going, but that's that's okay. So whenever I export raw data from Excel into QuickBooks, I have this concept of pivot table. So I'm going to go into data and then I'm going to click on, not data, sorry, I'm going to click on insert and then click on pivot table. And by the way, if you never dealt with pivot tables before and this is your first time, you know, prepare to be wowed. <laughs> if you've done pivot tables in the past, uh, I mean, if you've done pivot tables in the past, maybe this is just a review to kind of understand the concept. Um, so I'm going to hit OK. And then I can do things like pull my state information. Where's my state information? Pull that into my row label and then going to, for example, my customer information and then the amount and bring that over here. And then basically uh, through Excel, I can do really interesting things, get QuickBooks information.